And it's recognized for such time as it may consume. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> First, uh, let me thank Chairman Overstar and Subcommittee Chairman Norton for working with me on this uh, particular piece of legislation and for their continuous work on bills aimed at improving our country's emergency response and preparedness. Uh, let me also take the opportunity to thank uh, Congressman uh, Costello for managing this bill today. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, present information about uh, uh, this bill being considered here today. Uh, House Resolution 5825, the Multi-State Disaster Relief Act. Southern Indiana has been devastated by several major natural disasters over the last few years. Yet the one that stands out and the one that brought the, po the most pain and frustration to the residents of Southern Indiana was the incident that occurred almost exactly one year ago today. In early August of 2009, a series of severe storms rocked Indiana and Kentucky and damaged or destroyed hundreds of homes. The state of Kentucky received a major disaster declaration, but Indiana did not from the same storm. As a result, hundreds of Hoosiers living just a few miles from their friends and neighbors across the border in Kentucky were not eligible to receive federal grants to repair their homes, even though they were devastated by the same natural disaster. We can try to be prepared for natural disasters, but these events are largely beyond our control. However, we do have full control over how our federal government responds and aids individuals following a disaster. And in this instance, I believe our government missed the mark. This incident exposed a major flaw with the current FEMA disaster assistance process. The inability to fairly and accurately provide assistance for natural disasters that strike more, uh, strike more than one state. Currently, FEMA provides disaster assistance on a state-to-state -state basis. So when a disaster strikes, if a governor believes a disaster is beyond the capability of the state, he or she will make a request to the president to receive a major disaster dec declaration. And FEMA will make a recommendation to the president about whether a state should receive a declaration and whether individuals in certain counties should be eligible for individual assistance to repair their homes. When a disaster hits in the middle of a state and the damage is concentrated, the process is straightforward and the victims in the states most significantly affected will usually receive the necessary assistance. Yet when a disaster crosses over state lines, FEMA treats the incident as two separate cases and requires each state to meet a specific statewide damage threshold to receive a major disaster declaration. If that threshold is not met and a state is denied a disaster declaration, individuals who were as severely affected as those just across the state line have limited options for recourse and rebuilding. FEMA considers certain factors when determining whether, it, whether to recommend that the president declares a major disaster for a state and provide individual assistance. House Resolution 5825 would update and improve the factors FEMA uses to determine whether a state should receive a major disaster declaration. Specifically, House Resolution 5825 would require FEMA to take into account whether contiguous counties in a neighboring state were designated as in a major disaster from the same in incident. This means that FEMA would have to look at the damage from a neighboring state and factor this into their decision about whether to provide aid to individuals and issue a major disaster declaration, whereas now they are not required to take this into account. The bill would also require FEMA to review, update, and revise the regulation used to measure the severity and impact of a disaster when determining that the individuals should receive assistance within one year of the enactment. Lastly, this bill would require FEMA to issue a report to Congress within three months of enactment on their current policies concerning major disaster declarations for individual assistance and their policy on providing aid to individuals in, in counties contiguous to a state that has received a major disaster declaration. While this bill is unfortunately not retroactive, I believe if this law was in place last year, the result for my constituents in Indiana would have been very much different. This bill is the first step to right a wrong that befell Hoosiers last year when trying to pick up the pieces after a natural disaster were left wondering why their federal government was picking favorites. Storms and natural disasters do not care about state lines when they destroy someone's home or business. And under this bill, when a disaster strikes more than one state, 
FEMA officials would have to look at the impact of the overall storm and not just the impact on that individual state when deciding whether to provide disaster assistance to individuals. I believe this bill will help all Americans receive fair treatment and the next time disaster strikes, no matter which state that they come from. To the people of southern Indiana, I want to say that the lessons have been learned from last year's tragedy, and we're not going to let those same mistakes uh, be repeated. Now, let me also um, I give my thanks to my Republican friends for their bipartisan support of this bill, and I yield back uh, the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman